It all started with a pitch. Life casting with silicone is really weird, especially when you're the person that's being modeled, because there's this really goofy liquid that's very runny and cold on you, and as time starts to go on, it heats up, and then you start to sweat, and then you have this sauna kind of thing hanging out on your arm, and then you have to peel it off somehow, which, if you're like me and didn't shave your arm, hurts a lot, even though everyone told you to shave your arm. Due to the sheer cost of the dragon skin and buy double, we were trying to optimize for using as minimal material to do what we needed to as possible. And given that the internals of the arm were meant to be hollow to allow for the animatronic sections, we experimented with a couple different methods as far as like not having to cast a full arm and then carve it out and waste all that resource. So we went through three different molds. The first one was very much a self-contained piece with the exposed parts, but it was largely a learning experience. The second one had a very thoroughly like, detailed and structured arm portion, but we can't. And the third one had a very strong and structured hand portion, but a weak arm. And at the end of the day, we merged the best parts of them to create the final model. Makeup didn't work well because it rubs off. Then we tried to use psycho paint, which is a silicone that is meant to be a paint. Finding the correct ratio was a challenge, definitely. However, we find out that the best way to actually pigment to look realistic is actually dabbing it onto the silicone, which is kind of what we did here. For the inside of the arm, we needed something that looks fleshy, that looks more realistic. We laid out some psycho paint. Once it dries, it looks very thin. It's actually kind of see-through. And we laid it inside the arm. And I added an extra layer, just a regular skin color, and it brought this arm to life. I ended up doing a lot of the, the cutting from past experiences. Matt would come up with some idea, we would sketch it out together, and then I would kind of cut it really quick. I also made the table. That was one of the bigger projects that I had, was making and cutting the table at home. Um, another one of my big roles in the project is going to be the Foley artist. I'm a sound designer. So. Celery is the trick to a nice, good, wet sort of sounding crouch. So this is our first prototype of what our animatronic should do. Ultimately, there will be two rods at the end of this, and when they, the rods move forward and backwards, it should open up this bone structure right here. For the claw emergence, we decided to go with a 3D printed claw. It's made out of ABS material, which is strong enough to be pushed out of our silicon skin. We decided to paint it uh, kind of with a bloody texture. Originally, we wanted to make use of all the materials we have here and 3D print our project, but we realized that trying to 3D print would have taken way too long. For example, a two hour piece 3D printed would have taken just 10 minutes in wood, out of wood. The thing about wood is that when you cut so many corners here, or if you cut this wrong, if you cut this wrong, trying to put it all together might not be as optimal as you would making it out of 3D model. The reason we chose animatronics over puppetry is that animatronics can be controlled with just the push of a button and the arm movement would open. So our microcontroller of choice to control the animatronics was a Arduino Uno. But when we had it all done and ready, the skin on top of it was just too heavy on it and there wasn't enough girth to move it. So instead of getting the full range of action, we only got a little bit of movement, which is okay, but it's not good enough for the shot. Okay. So we attached one end of fishing line to one side of the arm, another end of fishing line to the other side of the arm. We pulled both sides apart and it created the effect we wanted. While this project was a cascade of unexpected events and there was a bit of a learning curve, when it was all said and done and the dust settled, we pulled it off.